Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm back with another quick review. This is Lego Creator Expert set number 10291, Queer Eye, the Fab Five Loft. This has 974 pieces. It retails for $100 in the US and this released in October 2021. This is one of those sitcom style apartment sets, except Queer Eye is a reality show and it's also um, this is purely my opinion, but I don't think it's anywhere near as popular as stuff like Friends and Seinfeld, you know, the kind of stuff, or The Big Bang Theory, the kind of stuff that's gotten apartment sets in the past. So this set was, like, really weird when it was revealed, but I actually think that it might be my favorite out of these apartment-style sets. I'm doing a quick review instead of a full review because I just want to talk about the set, but I don't want to put that much time and effort into this since it is several months old by now, and I don't think it's selling very well. I constantly see it on sale. This is actually my third time buying this set because I keep buying it, but then I keep finding it for a better price, so I end up returning it and then buying it at the cheaper price. But anyway, that's enough of that. Let's jump straight into the review. Here's our first side build. I really like this. That is a really nice sticker showing the Fab Five on their TV. And this is actually a really clever way of building a TV using a sideways um, like door frame and panel. That's really awesome. And I hope I see LEGO use that technique more in the future. Um, like I said, this is probably my favorite sticker in the whole set. It's just really good graphic design. And the set in general has really good graphic design, but unfortunately pretty much every single decorated piece you see is a sticker except for the rug over here and then the sign in the corner. Then as for minifigures, here we have Jonathan Van Ness. Um, I believe Jonathan Van Ness is non-binary, but he has stated a preference for he, him pronouns, so that's how I will refer to him. I really love his leg piece. That print is awesome. It's very shiny and he is wearing high heels, which I think is hilarious. I also really like the hair piece that Sally's from Nightmare Before Christmas in a plain brown. And it is really weird to see an unprinted torso nowadays, but it definitely fits um, like the style of clothing that he wears sometimes. Then we've got Tan France. I also really like the sand green color scheme on him, but his hair is really what shines here. This piece was made just for him, and it has like a little bit of a weak clutch power, which is the only thing I don't like about it, but it's like perfectly fluffed. And it's in this silver color, which is really cool. You can see his alternate face through the hair a little bit, but it also kind of just looks like, you know, like when you shave around like the bottom of the hair. So it's not too bad. I've definitely seen worse. Also, I should have mentioned, sorry, um, kind of all over the place right now. But the Fab Five, like, make people over. Like, that's the thing. Like, they try to make them feel comfortable in their own skin. So Jonathan is in charge of grooming. Tan is in charge of fashion. Bobby over here is in charge of design. And I love his shirt. That is a great arm print and a great print in general. Um, also really like that phone. And his face is so cute. He's really eager. Um, He did collaborate with the designers on this set. So that's really nice to see. I love it. I, you know, I love it when people kind of get involved in, like, these Lego sets that are based on them. Over here on the couch is Karamo. He is culture. Um, he's a little bit of a plainer minifigure. Great torso print. Okay matching to the skin tone there, but it could be a bit better. And his face print, he just gets one of them because it is, um, because he is bald, so he wears a hat in this Lego set. I think it would have been great to see a whole separate head included for him, though, because everyone else does have a second face. And then the last member of the Fab Five here is Anthony Porowski. Um, I really love his leg print. Again, very, very detailed. Lego really went all out on these minifigures. I also like that they sh kind of show that he has a smaller waist, um, because traditionally Lego's only done that for female minifigures. And then he's wearing a bandana around his neck, and he does get an alternate face as well. Here we have Kathy Dooley, who was Jonathan's teacher that had a big impact on his life. So apparently this was one of the more memorable episodes in the show. Her torso print is very, very intricately detailed. I also really like her hairpiece. Um, I think they, they talk a lot about chopping her mullet off, which I think is funny. And the alternate face is supposed to represent her after her makeover. So it's just the same face used for the made-up minifigure. And I guess the chair's coming with her because it's not a very strong build there. Um, but again, like pretty plain torso. That's like Luke Skywalker's hair in orange. And like I said, the same face. And then lastly, we do get this French bulldog as well. 
Um, so from what I gather, the Fab Five used to have this dog named Bruley, and unfortunately he passed away, but they did include him in the Lego set, which I think is a really nice little touch. And then the last minifigure, well, not the last minifigure related thing, but one of the last minifigure related things in this set is this like rack of clothes. You get an extra torso for Karamo, Jonathan, and Antony. And I think that these are really, really awesome. So I love this shirt for Karamo. Again, great arm printing. It's very nice to see Lego doing that. Then we get this sweater for Jonathan that says love is love. I love to see that. Um, and then over here, we have this leather jacket for Antony, which is really nice. Um, maybe my favorite torso, although I also really like Karamo's. And on the back, it says Rebuild the World um, because of LEGO's Rebuild the World campaign. We might as well start from the left side of the build then. There's some like bottles up on the shelf. That looks like cologne to me. Then you have some satchels, which are pretty nice. I um, love seeing it in that color. Then there is one of those mirrored friends stickers. I absolutely love those. And that's a really nice mirror in general. Um, they just, they work really, really well. Much better than, you know, just like slapping a non-reflective sticker. So I always love it when LEGO includes that. There's some more like bottles and stuff over here. And then there's this chair which can like spin at the base. But as you guys saw earlier, it is very weak because it's only on one stud. So that's kind of a shame, but it does look really good. Although it's also kind of high for a minifigure. We're going to come back to this door at the end, but it does open into a little play feature area. That's the only play feature in the set. But like I said, we'll come back to that. First, to finish things off, this is like, this is a modern style apartment. So I really like that aesthetic. I'm not like a sucker for the modern aesthetic, but I really like it sometimes just because it's so clean. And this set is just really clean. I love the whites and the grays. I love the exposed brickwork everywhere. You get so many white masonry bricks and you get so many gray ones. It's just, it's really nice to see because this isn't the kind of stuff you see in Lego because Lego also doesn't make super modern things. You do have plants sitting everywhere. I like the way these are built, although my favorite is this larger one off to the side here. Um, and then you have this whole central section with the couch. And much like the friend sets, this actually just lifts out entirely. Didn't mean to knock over that plant, but it lifts out entirely for you to examine. Um, one thing I don't like about it, though, is that this coffee table is not really secured at all. This is where I stop liking the modern aesthetic because I do not like the look of this couch. Modern couches look very uncomfortable, but like the, the clean apartment aesthetic is what I like. Um, also, these pillow designs, they're cool, but again, just not my thing. And I don't like how these pillows are just um, like those two by two pieces with two studs on them. Like it definitely looks good, but like you couldn't use them as pillows off of this couch the way that you could like use these ones. You also have this little like recliner over here. So, um, that's cool, but it doesn't really recline that much, and I wouldn't want to put a minifigure in it because they don't actually connect to any studs. There's a great little lamp build here, though, and there are a couple of accessories. Um, I seem to have lost the laptop, but I mean, I'm sure I'll find it later and show you guys. Right here is a book. It just has, I guess, some photos in there. Don't know if that's something from the show. Here is the glass top coffee table. That's really cool, um, good build, but again, the fact that it's not secured to anything and just floats around does bother me quite a bit. And we do have that nice rug pattern, and I really like that, um, but I mean, like the brick-built rugs in like the Friends sets are just much more impressive in my opinion. And the laptop was under my tripod. I'm assuming this is Bobby's because he's design, um, but I do like that sticker graphic there. Off to the side here, you have this iconic style taste class sign that is printed and it looks really good. I like how you can see the wiring like going between the neon letters. Um, but I mean, uh, something else that I didn't mention is that apparently the loft changes from like season to season, which also just makes this kind of awkward subject matter for a set. But this is the original loft. I don't know if this sign is present in every single one of them but they kept talking about it by saying it's like a super iconic piece. So maybe it is, maybe I should have watched an, ep an episode of the show before doing this review. Off to the corner, we have a little curio cabinet, which is almost impossible to access because of that giant plant in the middle there, but it does have enough room to open. And inside you just have a couple of teacups, a glass, and then a nano figure. We've got a Fab Five art print on this wall and then a Yas Queen sign on that wall. 
Um, these are not like printed super darkly. This one is pretty decent when it's put on the sticker, but this one, like some black definitely bleeds through the white there. Um, but this is probably my favorite area in the whole set, the kitchen. It just looks absolutely incredible. I love the window here. It's still daytime when I'm filming this. I do a lot of my filming at night, but um, like the light in my room comes in from the right side. So like it really like shines through the window, like in the actual set. So that's something that I think is really cool. Love the plants on the windowsill. And I like the suggestion of the raised blinds. And then you do have appliances and like countertops and stuff that can be taken out. But up here, you've got some shelves of stuff, some bottles of stuff, a coffee maker, which is a pretty decent build with a sticker. And then you have this little kind of like countertop dining area with the stove. These are also printed. I don't think I mentioned that earlier either. And this whole assembly does come out fairly easily so that you can take a better look at it. There is an oven sticker. Um, would have preferred an opening oven, but that's a nice sticker, although I think I put it on a little bit crooked. Like I said, those stovetop designs are really nice. I love the avocado sticker. And then I think that these are supposed to be salt and pepper shakers, um, just like fancy ones. And you've got a couple of pots and pans. At the back, I really like the tan color countertop. Again, just a very like neutral, clean look, which I appreciate. In this drawer, you have a spoon, and then you can also store the whisk that Antony is holding in there. And then in the bottom drawer, oh, I don't have any nails, so it's kind of hard to open this, but you do just have, um, whoops, you do have like a butcher style knife. Kind of hard to see. You've also got a little fridge over here, which has some more great stickers inside. Or actually, yeah, that'll probably be easier if I just take the whole thing out. On top, I have no idea what that is in the freezer. Maybe it's supposed to be ice cream. But down here, you have oat milk and then orange juice. That oat milk piece is a really great sticker. But unfortunately, it's not a separate carton. It's actually the side of one of these studs not on top bricks. And finally, you have Bobby's design chalkboard. This is another great sticker. It's basically, it's almost, it's almost like a crime scene board, or I guess it's real life Pinterest because it's just got stuff printed out and stuck on. There are Lego references here with the cone, the brick, and the chair. Really love that. And then you do have um, this like white lipstick piece, which is used for chalk. That's really clever. And I didn't even like realize what it was in the set until you put that sticker on. Okay, now it's time for a quick look at the outside, which is honestly better than most of these apartment sets because of like all of the clean brickwork. I really like the outside of these tall windows. Over here, again, just more back of bricks. But here's where all of the exciting stuff is because you can see a gear sticking out here for a play feature. And there's actually a ton more minifigure parts hidden back here. So you've got an accessory with the bag and the broom, and then you have different hairpiece options. So you have a hat, you have one of these long style hairpieces. That's actually one of my favorite Lego hairpieces. So I'm really glad to see it in this set. And this is another cool hairpiece as well. And then you have two different pant options as well. So that's really fun because this does add some playability to this set. You can actually make someone over. Um, again, like Kathy is the hero in this set, like the person that they make over, but you don't have to stick to these two options. You can like put her in anything you want. And so I think that that's really clever. I mean, if you wanted to, you could even switch out her torso with one of these. So the way that this play feature works is that you take off this little roof section and you open this door and this is basically like the Batcave changing station in um, in a lot of the Lego Batman sets. Sorry, I mean the Batman changing station in a lot of the Lego Batcave sets. So you put one version of Kathy, which I'm going to go through the door because that's probably going to be easier. So you put one version of Kathy on here and then you spin the gear and you put the other version of her here. And then that way you can just easily switch between both versions. So let's try that out right now. Okay, here we go. Mullet Kathy goes in, you shut the door, spin it around, and then Luke Skywalker hair Kathy comes out. I think that that works really well. Um, I like that Lego integrated those newer gear pieces, even though they're, they're like three years old at this point. Um, because again, it just adds a little bit of playability and it's it makes it very easy to switch between the characters so that you don't have to like sit there and like pull the hair piece off and like pull the torso off and all of that. Here are the extra pieces. Here's the box, which is actually really beautiful, not like the other 18 plus ones on a black background. I really appreciate that. Got a nice picture of the five of them on top. 
Um, and then over here, you've got the actual people. I think you can see that Lego did a very good job translating them into the minifigure style. Um, and then at the back, you do, again, have another image of them. So again, just shows how well Lego captured their likeness. I always like seeing Lego manage to portray real people like very well in minifigure form. And here is the instruction manual where you can see it yet again. Um, I really like this manual. I think it's a very attractive design. And inside you actually have a ton of information relating to Queer Eye and the design of the set. Um, so, I mean, I'm not even going to go through all of it because there's just so much, but it kind of walks you through every person, which is nice for people like me that haven't seen the show, because prior to this, I didn't even know who Karamo and Bobby were before this set came out, um, although I had heard of the other three. Um, that is the lead designer, Matthew Ashton. I believe he also led the charge on the Everyone is Awesome Lego set, so it's really nice to see someone championing, cha championing um, LGBT representation in Lego. All right, I'm sorry for this quick review running a little bit long, but I did have a lot of thoughts on this set. I think it's great. Um, I, I think it's I, th I think it's a good display piece the way it is. It comes with some really awesome minifigures. Even if you don't care about like these people in real life, like I mean, just all of the torsos are really, really awesome. And they're so detailed. You get like, what, like three pairs of dual molded arms and two pairs of printed ones. Or sorry, two pairs of dual molded arms and like two pairs of printed arms in this set. Um, that's really great. You even get all of those extra pieces. And so I, th I think it's a good, like, I, I think it's a good set. I just don't really think it's worth the money. $100 is a lot of money for this. And with 974 pieces, I know that it has, like I said, those minifigure parts. But compared to something like Seinfeld, and I really feel like this set should have been $90 at the absolute most. Like I said earlier, I don't think it's selling very well. I have seen it on, like, 10 20% discounts pretty much from the day it came out, which was very surprising to me because Lego sets above $80 don't typically go on sale for several months. Um, but then on the other hand, that means that if you want to buy this, you can probably get it for $90 or under. I still think it's a good parts pack as well, um, just for all of those masonry bricks. So yeah, that pretty much sums up my thoughts on this set. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. Um, and if you comment anything homophobic, I will be deleting it, fair warning. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. Check out my website, goldenninja3000.com, and I'll see you guys with more videos soon. Bye for now.